I'm here for the big show. Welcome to Miss Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 teen movies that were ahead of their time. What did I miss? <sighs> the oppressive patriarchal values that dictate our education. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable adolescent-centered flicks that were most ahead of the curve on things like style, social issues, and more. Beware of spoilers ahead. And if we missed any of your favorite flicks, let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The Breakfast Club the Breakfast Club wasn't the first film to focus on the plight of teenagers, but it might have been among, if not the, first to treat those modern plights with a meaningful level of sincerity. What do you care what I think anyway? I don't even count, right? I could disappear forever and it wouldn't make any difference. I may as well not even exist at this school. Remember? It centers on five kids from different cliques who learn they have more in common than they think during a day in detention. Many popular flicks after The Breakfast Club took on the idea of high school cliques, but few inspected and unpacked the extremely thin lines between them. What is going to happen to us on Monday when we're all together again? I mean, I consider you guys my friends. I'm not wrong, am I? Nowadays, Stereotypical cliques feel like a trope of teen movies past, but in the 1980s, The Breakfast Club was already breaking down those barriers. Why are you being so nice to me? Because you're letting me. Number 9, Pretty in Pink. So many high school movies of yore revolved around the social tension between jocks and geeks, popular kids and nerds. But in Pretty in Pink, the real tension is between economic classes. You're ashamed to be seen with no, me! I am you're not. ashamed I am to go not. out with me! You're afraid! No, you're terrified that your goddamn rich friends want to throw! Just say it! Just tell me the truth! Andy is a working-class teenager with a job. She and her best friend Ducky have nicknamed the popular kids who mistreat them Richies. And it seems a big reason the two groups don't get along is well. I mean, you shouldn't be allowed to invite just anybody. Steph, she's gonna ruin my night. Shut up, Benny. Practically every aspect of Andy's existence, from school to her relationship with her father to her romantic life, is filled with class anxiety. Pretty in Pink may come dressed up in a pretty package, but it's more complex than you'd think. Well, you know, maybe it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't mean it isn't right. Right? Doesn't mean we can't try. Number eight, Clueless. A lot of movies just graze the surface of what it's like to be a teenager. But Clueless is a lot more than just a fizzy, poppy good time. Ugh, oh, as if! In Lesser Hands, Amy Heckerling's classic comedy about a Beverly Hills girl meddling in others' relationships might have been just all right. But with the help of a killer starring performance from Alicia Silverstone, Clueless went beyond mirroring culture to actually influence it. I'm amazed. That I'm devoting myself so generously to someone else? No, that you found someone even more clueless than you are to worship you. I am rescuing her from teenage hell. Do you know the wounds of adolescence can take years to heal? The film not only had an impact on the way teenagers talk, but on a particular fashion movement as well. References to Cher and her signature style are as prevalent today as they were then. Oh no, you don't understand. This is an alaya. And a what? -a? Number seven, Juno. It's pretty rare that a movie comes along that is a teen comedy, handles a weighty topic, and captures a very specific moment on the precipice of a new indie film age. But 2007's Juno did all three of those things. Dad, either I just peed my pants or I'm... Or? Thundercats are gone! Elliot Page stars as Juno, a wisecracking, reference-making teen who accidentally gets pregnant. After deciding to give the baby to an upper-class couple looking to adopt, Juno must navigate teen pregnancy and relationships, new and old. What, are you, are you ashamed that we did it? No. Because at least you don't have to have the evidence under your sweater. The script handles each issue with care, but never shies away from tough truths. Plus, the movie is immensely quotable with one-liners that would stay around for years to come. That ain't no Etch-a-Sketch. This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. Number six, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. 
Fast Times at Ridgemont High might not be the very first teen movie, but in the modern teen comedy age, it's the beginning of a movement. Before Dazed and Confused or John Hughes' many adolescent-centered classics, there was Fast Times. I've been thinking about this, Mr. Han. If I'm here and you're here, doesn't that make it our time? <laughs> we certainly did nothing wrong with a little feast on our time. The plot is simple, following the lives of different teenagers at a fictional high school. But what makes the film so enduring and influential is how amidst the chaos, it has oodles of empathy for its teenage characters. What do you care about Mark Ratner for? I mean, he's a 16-year-old usher in the movie theater. You have dated older guys, you work at the best food stand in the mall, and you are a close personal friend of mine. Fast Times is sexual, silly, and can be way over the top. Yet it's also sincere, and its lack of judgment for its characters makes it revolutionary. Act like wherever you are, that's the place to be. Isn't this great? Number five, 10 Things I Hate About You. When it comes to nuanced, layered female leads, Kat Stratford fits the bill and then some. My mission in life, but obviously I struck your fancy, so you see it worked. The world makes sense again. We'd obviously seen great, well-rounded characters in teen movies before, but none of them were quite like her. She was tough, direct, and didn't leave you with questions on where she stood on anything, politically or otherwise. People perceive you as somewhat tempestuous. Heinous bitch is the term used most often. Kat might be one of the first true blue feminists of the teen movie, particularly in the pop culture sense. Her taste in music, books, and culture was just something we'd never really seen before. Played by the incomparable Julia Stiles, the character is very 90s in some ways, but also feels like someone you might meet at a Cardigans concert tomorrow. Was that a yes? No. Well then, was that a no? No. I'll see you at 9.30 then. Number four, Bring It On. Tackling cultural appropriation and in 2000? Bring It On said, bring it on. The film follows cheerleader Torrance Shipman, who, shortly after becoming squad captain, learns that the old captain stole cheers from the East Compton Clovers. Every time we get some, here y'all come trying to steal it, putting some blonde hair on it, and calling it something different. We've had the best squad around for years, but no one's been able to see what we can do. Oh, but you better believe all that's gonna change this year. The movie has the squads facing off against each other at the championships, but it also forces its white characters to deal with cultural appropriation and shines a light on the issue in a way teen movies haven't really tackled before. And I'm trying to make it right. You wanna make it right? Then when you go to nationals, bring it. Don't slack off because you feel sorry for us. That way, when we beat you, we'll know it's because we're better. While there's no doubt this 2000s classic could have done more to center its black characters, it's still pretty ahead of its time with what it does do. Hey, I just want to say, you know, captain to captain, I respect what you guys did out there. Number three, Heathers. Watching Heathers today, it's hard to believe what you're seeing. You look like hell. Yeah, I just got back. Teen movie and black comedy don't always mix well, but the 1989 flick hit the sweet spot. The movie centers on a group of friends, three girls named Heather and one named Veronica, who rule the school. But when Veronica is lured by the mysterious and it turns out violent JD, a murder spree takes over the school. I like it. It's got that uh, what a cruel world, so let's toss ourselves in the abyss type of ambiance, huh? Heathers is twisted and cynical, but still manages to bring the humor. It turned teen movies on their head before it was cool to do so, and is still one of the best subversions of the genre around. I don't know what it's given me, but I've got no control over myself when I'm with JD. <sighs> Are we going to prom or to hell? Number two, but I'm a cheerleader. In 1999, a satire of conversion therapy and its dangers wasn't something we were seeing a lot of on our screens. But that all changed with But I'm a Cheerleader, Jamie Babbitt's first feature directorial endeavor. Okay, who wants to go down with me? The movie centers on a cheerleading teen who's made to attend conversion camp when her parents find out that she's a lesbian. It's a sharp satire, but also very revealing about teen sexuality. There's not just one way to be a lesbian. You just have to continue to be who you are. 
In the end, the protagonist, played by Natasha Lyonne, accepts herself despite the camp's pressures. It's an incredibly positive view on queerness and continues to be one of the best LGBTQIA films today. One, two, three, four, you're the one that I adore. Five, six, seven, eight, don't run from me cause this is fake. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dirty Dancing Most people remember Dirty Dancing for the, well, Dirty Dancing. But there's so much more going on in this 1980s classic. There are a lot of things about me that aren't what you thought. If you love me, you have to love all the things about me. It takes on working class strife, abortion, and growing up in roughly an hour and a half, and still manages to be enticing. In particular, the way Penny's abortion is dealt with is incredible. Even Baby's physician father treats Penny with nothing but care, even when he might be upset with his daughter. Oh. <laughs> yes, I know that hurts. We're going to take care of that. Baby's relationship with her dad is also handled with nuance, with the film tackling the moment when a parent realizes their kid is growing up with empathy. With all that and more, Dirty Dancing left a defining mark. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.